Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and today we're doing a stereo install or a stereo replacement on this 2007 Toyota RAV4. In this install, we're going to show you how to remove the factory radio. Um, it's basically this portion here around this whole bezel. We're going to get that pulled on out. We're going to head over to the bench. We're going to get the new stereo wired up with the wiring harness, get the dash kit put back together, and get everything reinstalled. Let's get started. So the first thing that we need to do is get this radio on out. Now the best thing to always check before you start pulling things apart is ensure that all your discs are pulled out of the radio. Once the radio has been removed, it's really difficult to get them out. Um, the next thing we need to do is these side covers are held on with clips. We need to remove those to gain access to the bolts and mounting points uh, for the radio. I have a panel tool here which makes things pretty easy to get back in there. The nice thing is these panel tools don't scratch anything. Pop that on out just like so. Now you don't have to remove it. You can actually just leave it there. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do the other side as well. Now you'll notice on each side of the radio, there's four 10 millimeter bolts. Go ahead and remove those. Okay, once you pull the radio out, there's gonna be a couple of harness that you'll need to disconnect. There's little tabs on these harnesses. Press those little tabs in and then gently pull on the harness. It should pop on out. Okay, just like so, we got our harnesses all removed here and our antenna connector. At this point, we're gonna set this off to the side, head to the bench and begin prepping our new radio. So some of the parts that we're gonna need is this, first of all, our doubled in Pioneer that we've chosen. It's the Pioneer AVH201EX. Um, we're doing this dash kit, which is the American International mounting kit for doubled ins, the TOIX994. Um, we're using a Metro wiring harness, micro bypass for options and video playback while in motion. We also picked up one of these aux to uh, female RCA um, adapter because we're going to retain the factory aux input using this other generic harness from Metra. Um, this other harness also does steering wheel controls which we're not supporting because this doesn't even have. And then finally in a separate video we're going to be doing a backup camera as well so we'll throw a link in the description once that video becomes available. So the first thing we're going to do we're going to go ahead and strip both ends of our wiring harnesses. This is the one that came with the Pioneer and this is the one that came with our Metra kit. Um, stripping both ends we're essentially just matching color for color. We're going to solder and heat shrink. You can use buck connectors or crimp caps um, if you prefer. Once we get everything soldered up we'll tape it up with some Tessa tape to make it look factory and we'll after that go ahead and get our radio mounted in the kit. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we got our heat shrink on. We're matching here color for color and we're gonna use a soldering iron. With that nice and hot soldering iron, we're gonna go ahead and put our solder tip behind it. Solder up our connection. Makes a nice solid connection. And once that cools, we're gonna slip the um, heat shrink up and over the connection. Okay, so we went ahead and soldered up all our connections here. We match basically all our colors up here. Now, what I'm doing is grabbing these heat shrink tubes, sliding them down, and we're gonna cover all our connections just to ensure that nothing shorts on each other. And then we'll use a heat gun and shrink the tubes. So now's our main harness cools. Uh, we're gonna set that off to the side and talk about our accessory harness. Now this uh, generally comes with the kits. We'll, we'll post uh, the part number to this accessory harness down here. Cool thing about this guy, it provides um, your AS access ASWC1 connection. In the event you did have steering wheel controls, you don't have to wire anything in manually. It's pretty nice. This plugs into the module that's sold separately and provides you every everything that you'll need. You just need essentially wire up power and ground into your harness. You'll just wire it up in parallel, matching up those colors. Um, which provides power for the unit to function. Other than that, you plug in the unit, you plug in this to the other side of the car and it's self-programming, and you got steering wheel controls. Now this specific RAV4 does not have it. It was not equipped with steering wheel controls. So for the end, that doesn't have anything to do with our 
aux, we're actually going to go ahead and cut on out and save it for another install. Just because, like I said, it's not, it is not needed at this time. And so all we're left is this end and this end. So this will plug in and then from the center console or depending on where you have your aux input located, this is the output from that factory location and this needs to go to our aftermarket radio. So what we've done, because our aftermarket radio on the back has an aux input, we picked one of these guys up. It's a male 3.5 millimeter jack to a female RCA. What this will do is just plug directly in and then on the back of our radio is an aux input and that's where that will plug on in so we can keep our aux function okay our wiring harness is good to go our aux harness is also done and good to go um, at this point let's get our dash kit on the radio and get everything installed okay so we have our dash kit here now it's accommodating well for a single end doubled end we'll go ahead and cut out this middle support brace since we're doing a doubled end and just file down the edges just so it's nice and smooth we won't be using the pocket since we're doing a doubled end so we'll set that off to the side and then here um, because we're not doing a doubled end we don't need that uh, but we'll keep this guy on out because that'll be our trim piece that goes up and around the radio once we get it installed here's our side mounting brackets left and right and since we're doing a doubled in, we'll also need to put these little spacers on our side mounting brackets just so everything mounts flush. All right, so we got our dash kit all put together here. We have our factory one and aftermarket, and you kind of see the, the comparison there. Um, make sure you follow your instructions here, especially with this pack kit. The nice thing is it takes you through step by step, shows you how to assemble the doubled in, makes it nice and easy. Let's head over to the car and begin getting everything installed. Now you notice we also have our Bluetooth mic. Don't forget to put this in before you get the radio all reassembled. All right, so we're here back in the car. We got everything ready to go. Let's go ahead and start installing the radio. We're gonna go ahead and take our harness adapter and we're gonna go ahead and plug that on in here. Just like so. We'll get our smaller harness and plug that in as well. They should click on in. Now let's get our aux harness. Plug that on in. Perfect. And now that'll go on the aux input. Now, um, before we button everything up, I want to show you kind of our USB mod that we did. So. Generally, when the Pioneer comes in the box, it has an extension cable, a six-foot uh, USB extension wire. Um, in videos past, we actually replaced the uh, cigarette lighter input, or the power point here, with a aux USB. And we'll have a card up there on the screen to allow you to actually click on that video in case you want to check it out. Link in the description as well. But this individual loves to use this for a big power inverter, so we didn't want to replace it. Um, so instead, we popped one of these blanks out, because we had one, and we put a little USB in there in, in its place and glued it in. So this will plug into our USB extension cable, because this little panel just pops out, just held on with clips here. And we fed that up, and this will plug into the back of the radio. Um, kind of a cool little mod. It looks factory. Looks nice and clean. And, uh, yeah, just allows great access to the USB input for the radio itself for charging or uh, for data transfer. So. All right. So let's go ahead and start connecting all our cables here. Do our main power harness. Plug that on in. Since we're doing a backup camera, we're going to plug that on in. Now our antenna wire is a little short, so we'll do that one last. We have our aux harness. We'll plug our aux on the aux input. We get our mic. And then our USB extension cable. Because that'll go down to our flush mount in the pocket, which we showed you before. Now, let's get that... The AM FM plugged in. Start tucking these cables in. All right. Get these two top clips engaged. They pop in flush. Let's 
So now let's grab our 10 millimeter socket and put our bolts in. Now, before you totally button things up, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and just give yourself a good test. Great, it's booting up. There we are, let's just try to get, got some static here. Yep. Perfect. Okay. So with that radio bolted in nice and snug, let's go ahead and put our little panels back on here. Those just pop right back into place. Excellent. Looks great. Really impressed with this dash kit. Okay, now down below with our little aux USB mod. See this guy popped out one of the blinks. I cut a hole and got that all installed. We're gonna plug our USB into that. Just give ourselves plenty of length here. We're gonna go ahead and replace that plug and get it all back in. Should just clip on in. It does. Okay. That is it. Do a final test here. Perfect. All good to go. If you have any questions about what we did here, post a comment below. Happy to help you. Thanks guys for watching the channel. Hit that like button if you liked what you saw. Uh, be sure to subscribe. We upload great content all the time. And uh, we will certainly see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.